Hey, welcome back to Dirty Shirt Workshop. We're down in the garage instead of the shop, which is a little weird, to take care of something I've actually wanted to do since I was actually doing siding on the shop, which is this. No, it's not getting uh, cancer and reproductive harm. Uh, it's this. This is a solenoid controlled air valve. So what I want to do is it's a real pain in the butt to come down here kick on the air compressor open the valve so i got air up in the shop and then when i'm done at the end of the day i need to come down and turn it off because it does leak down a little bit and occasionally the thing will kick on in the middle of the night and wake you up so what i got is wiring that goes all the way up the shop to light switch that light switch wire is going to go ahead and hook into the control panel for the compressor so that when I flip that on, that on it will turn on the compressor and we'll open the solenoid valve so all I have to do is flip a switch up there and I've got air great quality of life improvement so this thing does want a big air filter in place so this is a 300 cubic foot air filter right here so I got that set up will be upstream of this uh, they also tell you to mount this vertically so that you don't get crap stuck in the, inside the valve so it'll always dump out. And then, so I've got to finish putting it together here on this manifold I've put together. So it's going to go like this with the salvo on the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and mount this whole thing to the wall right here. So I've got a valve here for my packs to go out to the shop. I've got this old line here that actually goes all the way down to my sheds that bur buried underground. It goes to about 250 foot. And then uh, air here for out here if I need to blow up a tire or something. And then last thing is uh, just an empty valve here on the end to drain in case I get any water in this manifold column. The one other thing is when I wire my switch up, I'm gonna leave the manual switch that's already down here parallel to that. So whichever one I turn on, it's still gonna kick on the solenoid valve. So I've already got most of the plumbing done. I'm gonna get this hung up. And the main thing I'm gonna show you is how the electric is gonna work inside that panel. So. Yeah, I'll switch you probably over to time lapse here while I get the rest of this put together and then I'll bring you back for the electric. All right, a uh, couple things I'm gonna do right here. So I like to use extension cord a lot of times when I need to just run a short wire like this uh, because I can always cut the end off. And now I've got a nice pigtail for a drill or something or whatever. You're always needing a power tool cord. So now I've already got one of those. So the way this works, this has got a plug here that just clips on to some terminals. So you hook into those wires there. Hope that's in focus. And then it's got this nice uh, cap with a thread in fitting here that's going to fit around the cord and retain it in there. It's got a little rubber grommet here as well. So that fits in and just holds everything together tight with this grommet and it's got even got a little o-ring so i'm gonna get that piece hooked up but not yet so the reason why not yet i'd actually like to run this through some liquid tight conduit around here since this is against the wall and over to my box uh, the other thing i'd like to do 
No, that's it. That is what I want to do. I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of how the electric works here. So I've got a 30 amp plug here. I'm unplugged right now. That comes in here, red and black for your hot leads. Okay. Then off the black comes out to this little manual switch here. When you turn that switch, that connects to this yellow wire, which comes up here and all that, it's just reusing this terminal to come out to this other wire here that this wire actually goes out to the pressure switch that's hooked to the tank. So right now, because the tank is completely empty, this switch is closed and it's calling for, uh, it's calling for the motor to run, okay? So that comes back on this white lead down here into this contact on the contactor. Once that gets power, then it magnetizes and it throws the switch up and that closes the contactor and energizes the motor. Real piece of cake to actually go ahead and set this up so that I can have a switch upstairs that kicks things on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the wires for my other switch that goes up to the shop and I'm gonna put them in the same terminals as this manual switch. So I have two switches in parallel, right? So that means I can turn it on right here at the compressor if I want and I can turn it on from up in the shop. Then the other thing I'm gonna do is tie in again on the output of that switch because that's where my 220 volts are gonna be. And then I'm gonna run that lead over to the solenoid valve over here on the wall. So that thing will get 220, it'll energize, it'll open up, open my valve. I'm gonna leave this ball valve open for the shop Anything, any other setup, I'll be down here to move valves, so I'll just hit the manual. And then the white lead that comes back from that will actually just tie in right with the red lead from the power here. So I've got my 220 going across that solenoid valve. And that's all there really is to it. So this would be a pretty easy thing for anybody to do. This is gonna be a huge quality of life improvement. So I'm gonna get going with this now and see what I can do. Got this wired, I'm gonna do my best to show you what's going on. I redid my power plug here. It's all a uh, non-metallic conduit again. I'll plug it in on this top plug here, up there. Okay, so the feed comes in just like it did before to, the, uh, to these two terminals, okay? So there's a few differences here. This uh, white lead here. You know what, I'm not gonna start there. I'm gonna start with, uh, this white here, which I'm gonna paint that black in a minute, uh, that goes up, that goes up to the switch that's in the shop, out this conduit over there and through the house and to that conduit. And then the black 
comes back from that and it goes over to this wire nut here. Okay, so that is tied in with a pigtail to this terminal here where the feed for this manual switch goes back to. So that gives me two switches in parallel. So when either of one of those is on, okay, I've got power there. And then the other thing that's in that pigtail is the compressor pressure switch. So that goes out just like it did before and the white comes back and goes back into uh, the contactor here. Sorry, it's hard to do this. There, right there. That's back into the contactor, okay? So when that kicks on, then it'll actually, that's when it'll actually kick the compressor up and run the motor. Now, how about the solenoid valve? Well, that's also in that pigtail. So when either, either one of those switches is on, it's gonna get hot power to it. And then this white here, that connects in with the red side of the power, also goes to the solenoid valve. So whenever the sw either switch is on, that solenoid valve is always on, okay? And then the compressor pressure valve still runs whether or not the contactor goes. And I got all my ground leads here. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I might make a diagram, we'll see if I get around to it, but I'm sure that would help because you can't see nothing in this box. I've not tried this yet, so if it blows up, neat, you get to see it. All right, that's a good sign, the compressor's running, and I can hear that solenoid click, so I think it's definitely trying to open. It just can't yet until it builds some pressure. So I did get air coming out here. Now I'm gonna open it again, and it should just lose a little air because now the valve should be closed. And the solenoid is closed, that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna open up the shop valve just for fun, and now I'm gonna go up and hit the switch. Hopefully this thing will kick on. It should, I don't see why it won't. I switched it back down to this switch because I want to be here to make sure that the pressure valve is wired correctly and will shut the compressor off when it hits what I set it for, which I think I set this for, yeah, I did, I know I set it, it's 150. So if I see it go to like 160, then I know that that's not wired right and I gotta take this apart and figure it out. So we'll just wait and see. Okay, the pressure valve works, so we know that it's safe. Now I turn this off, we should hear the solenoid click off. I did. All right, I'm gonna drain the pipe for the shop out down here. So there should be no air in these pipes. So I'm gonna go up to the shop now and I'm gonna run a hose and we're gonna set up the camera right with the switch so we can see that this works and demonstrate the real convenience of this. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Time to check this thing out. This is the door that I used to come in and out of the shop. Got my lights right there. Got another switch here. This will be for a center light for the shop if I ever decide to put one in. I haven't decided that yet. I don't really need it, but it could be useful. This is the compressor switch. Not doing anything. I got my die grinder here, gonna have it. 
put to use here shortly. Let's try it out. Again, hear the air compressor running. Just barely. Just barely. It is going down there. This is why I wanted to do this. I love this. The one thing I found when I started putting the siding on the shop, it was really nice being able to be up here using things and not have that air compressor kicking on and off, beating your ears to death all day long. So that's when I figured out I needed to get a solenoid valve set up because I was getting tired of walking up and down the stairs every single day to turn that thing on and then shut it off so it wouldn't kick on in the middle of the night. So this is a great quality of life improvement. I'm really going to enjoy having this set up here. Yeah, this is great. Thanks for watching.